So yeah, welcome everyone to the first core call of the year. Um, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, hopefully the flat situation will not be very severe to you guys. Uh, we we'll start with the update from the Interchain team. Uh, we we'll start with uh, with the product update. So Susanna. Yeah, just um, a couple of things. Uh, so basically, this year we're going to try and really launch new features with kind of people in the pipeline to actually use them. So we'll really be able to do this end to end with channel upgradability and the feature that you can add to your existing channels of channel upgradability would be fee middleware. So if anyone is like interested in adding the relay relayer incentivization to their chains, um, we're going to start reaching out to people and try and get some kind of first user in the pipeline. Um, then some of the work we're doing is we're doing some research around ICS 23. Um, Aditya was helping Penumbra out um, and drafted this PR to support, um, make some changes to the Tendermint client to support their specific tree structure. And the problem was around the non-existence proofs. So we want to check if there's other chains that could have other changes needed to ICS 23 going forward, um, just to be kind of aware of that. Um, then with ADR8, um, I guess this is more like a notification for people to be aware of this. Um, so this was to enable the like ACK or the ACK error to be fed back to a calling smart contract or some non-human thing that's actually calling into an application module. And Osmosis have implemented the middleware for um, sending the ACK and ACK error back to a calling Cosmosm contract for ICS20. And FMOS are looking to implement it for um, like Solidity contracts. Um, and I'm in contact with other Cosmosm chains to try and get them to well, first of all, ask if like Osmosis middleware meets their requirements for um, sending the callback to their contracts for their use cases. And then if not, we'll try and basically um, feed that back and just try and have this as a bit of a standard for the callbacks, at least for the Cosmosm chains. Um, and then another thing to just have on the radar is that um, Osmosis first implemented a rate limiting where they used like a wrapper, but then actually did the um, kind of rate limiting with, um, yeah, um, yeah, Osmosis is already speaking to Juno. Uh, yeah. And just on the rate limiting, so basically then also Stride and AXA have implemented the rate limiting, but completely in Go, whereas Osmosis had like a Go wrapper and then they actually had uh, Cosmosm contracts um doing the rate limiting logic um so because it's kind of productive for as many chains as possible to be implementing some kind of rate limiting as like a security measure um we're then considering kind of using the rate limiting that stride is implemented because axa has a bit of like custom logic dependent on their own interoperability use cases um of then putting this into another tutorial because we also had some feedback that um, some of the uh, kind of understanding how to make your own middleware could be like documented better in some ways and having more examples would be nice as well. But yeah, that's just some product updates. So then uh, I'll pass on to Carlos unless there's any questions. Thank you, Susanna. Um... Yeah, any, any questions for Susanna? For, for the ICS23 stuff, it's like outside of the ICS23 repo. It's not ICS23 directly or? No, it's like, um, so basically Penumbra had um, some problems with non-existence proofs for their tree structure. Um, so the PR is, I think, adding a field to the Tendermint client. Or since, um, I'd have to double check the precise. Um, yeah, it's adding a yeah. sentiment value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, because this kind of work came about, 
we just want to do some research and see if there's going to be like maybe some other work that could be done for other chains that might want to use IBC in the future. It's kind of just like a research. It's not like there's no like other PR into the repo or anything like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, um, if no more questions for Susanna, we continue with the updates uh, for engineering for IBC Go. Uh, we're working on uh, V7. Uh, this release uh, at the moment, yeah, it's including the auto client refactor, uh, the upgrade to SDK 47, and also the support for OC to ICS 20. Uh, on the auto client refactor, uh, we're writing documentation um and we are also now uh, focusing a bit on testing uh, we're trying to to see if we can test um uh, with the with the solo machine uh, that crypto.com uh, developed um to see if the changes that we made to to the solo machine are are all fine uh, and we also would like to test um the submission of misbehavior uh, so we're contacting also hermes and yeah, the 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 goal and relayer teams to see if they can help us a bit there. Um, yeah, that's a bit on the auto client refactor part. It's is is almost ninety five percent done. So, um, just finishing a bit of the documentation mostly. Um, then on the upgrade to SDK forty seven, we are at the moment blocked. Uh, and this is an item that we would like to discuss in the call, uh, especially with the relayer teams. Um, so yeah, there were some changes on Tendermint 37 that changed the, the encoding of the key value at event attributes. And that uh, broke um, basically relaying. Uh, Damian has spent a lot of time on this. Uh, so maybe Damian, do you want to give more details? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think there, I left, a, sorry, Addy actually from the Hermes team left a summary on the, the pull request. But yeah, essentially it seems like it's something to do with the um, event attributes changing in Tendermint 037 from byte slice to string. And I think it's to do with the proto encoding is normally um, by standard when over JSON RPC, it's, it's used as a base 64 encoded string which I don't think is the case anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, so it was um, base 64 encoded and now it's just a plain string and and that broke uh, relaying. Um, so then, yeah, uh, the question or the, or the yeah, topic that we would like to discuss is how we can work together with the relayer teams to fix this. Uh, yeah, because at the moment we are basically blocked by this on the for the upgrade of the, of the SDK. Um, Hermes, Hermes or the IBC RS team are trying to have both versions of Tendermint working together, um, right, Adi? Yeah. Uh, hey. um, it, to put it briefly, uh, we need to have side by side support, so we cannot just have. 34 to 34 or tender mean 37 to 37 relaying, we need to be able to kind of do arbitrarily 34 to 37, 37 to 34, 34 to 34, 37, 37, kind of all possible variations. And we anticipated that more than half a year ago. Uh, so we started considering what could be good options and we're doing it at the tender mean RS level, uh, the tender mean RS library uh, to provide a kind of a abstract way of um, of, uh, for all the users of the Tendermint Interest library to uh, to to give uh, for them to have a general uh, access to, um, to to basically events without needing to do runtime uh, runtime assessment of what is the version of this Tendermint that I'm communicating with as a user and select that. Uh, it's a bit of a complex change, and we went back and forth partly because uh, there was also the 35 that was scraped off. Uh, so now, but so now we're actually quite close with implementing that at Tendermint RS level. It's a huge PR. Uh, and the person who was implementing it was on vacation up until today, but it's it's the biggest priority on our side. So 
uh, I expect by the end of this week that PR will be merged. And by the end of uh, next week, uh, everything will be tested also on the Hermes side and uh, things should be working. So is that a complete answer? Okay, yeah. So so then in approximately, yeah, if everything goes okay, maybe a couple of weeks from now, we could start also testing from our end. Yeah, I guess the, like the main concern, I guess, is with the GoRealer because I'm not entirely sure into like the internals of how everything is glued together, but from the digging that I did, um, like it seems to be using the Strange Love Lens package, which just uses a Tendermint RPC client directly. And yeah, it was at that point that I kind of bailed out because I'd already <laughs> spent a lot of time looking at code. But I, yeah. I don't know if we have any Strange Love guys here today, do we? Yeah, unfortunately, I think we don't have anybody from a Strange or uh, anybody from a Strange Love today here in the call. Steve? Yeah. I'm I'm here on the call. Um, oh yeah, thank you. But I'm still uh, getting ramped up on the relayer myself, and so I, I won't be able to answer those questions. Okay. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, but uh, if at least you could maybe try to contact them uh, or discuss this internally with the rest of the Golan relayer team. Um, yeah. Please also reach to us if you need more information. Okay. Uh, yeah, this, this is kind of a yeah a high priority issue for us because yeah otherwise we're blocked. Uh, we, we 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 cannot really continue with the upgrade to SDK forty seven. So okay, yeah, I'll bring I'll bring that up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, then yeah, we can continue on the Slack channel uh, discussing if needed. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else to talk about this topic then now? I think no, right? Yeah, I, I just want to get a general impression of how good of an experience this was for the IBC Go team because I feel like it was it came out of the blue, right? And it wasn't like it, it wasn't let's say perfect in the way it was handled, or is that just my impression? Yeah, indeed. Uh, maybe Damian, yeah, because you spent a lot of time on this. Uh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I guess the like events changes were slightly unexpected because mm. we didn't anticipate it breaking for relayers. Like yesterday I was speaking with Callum, like, and he's not, he's not working on tenement anymore, but like he said that, that that change had been made on like the main branch, like, like over a year ago. And it's just the fact that it was like, you know, pulled yeah. from, from 34 jumping to 37 that, that the issue kind of arose. Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, I, it was a, actually a bit of a loaded question because I'm thinking I, I had an ulterior motive in my mind. I'm, I'm looking for reasons to add I, IBC level tests in the Tendermint repository. Uh, and it sounds like there is some good motivation to have even just very basic uh, assertions on how do events look like, uh, what errors do certain RPC endpoints return, uh, Hermes relies heavily on all of these things and as does the gory there um so i might i might ask you for feedback on that damian on, on some sort of ci on what we could cover uh, the tender meat level because it sounds like this is a major gap uh, and it gets lost like i from the hermes team we knew that this is gonna come and then we implemented it and then we scraped it off because 35 was scraped off and then we realized okay let's do side-by-side -side support for the two versions and it just kind of got lost. And even for me, it was a bit of a surprise when we were debugging in December with you, Damien. So, yeah. Quick no, side, uh, side question. Is there like a spec for IPC events? Good question. I guess not, no. Uh, no, no. Events, I think, are not part of the spec. Um... Because I feel like, um, if I feel like for tournament SDK and everyone else, if we want to do like acceptance testing, then I feel like, also, I think for um, for relayers in general, I was talking to Zarko earlier, if like events are in the spec, then it's like if someone like Substrate or Near go and implement it, they know how to emit events and it's easier for relayers in the future. Like, I, I think for this, it's like we possibly on the SDK, we could have done something or even, um, even like IBC instead of 
returning the string that IBC could just like base 64 encode it itself and send that to Tendermint instead of the plain string if that was like part of the spec. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. Some of the standardization would be good. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, detail is not here today, but yeah, it's something worth discussing also with him then um, um, if we can add it to the spec. Um, as next steps, uh, maybe in the SDK sync call that we have, we can discuss that uh, when, when Adita is back. Um, I, I think one question. Um, so, so you said that you, you knew already like uh, in advance that uh, 37 was going to yeah, be, be breaking. Yeah. How, how, how did you know that uh, or, 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 or what was the, the things that you, you knew that would break? Uh, we we knew exactly this thing is going to break when it was implemented originally in 035. Uh, okay. So exactly the event changes. And I had a couple of discussions with Sam and Michael from Burger trying to get them to clarify to me what is it exactly that, that that's going to break. And yeah, then, then there was the 35 scrape off and uh, it, it got lost. And then we picked it again because it was it it went it back it was backported. And I don't know who 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 was the savior there, but someone pinged me. Uh, so it eventually landed on the Tendermint RS roadmap, and thanks to I don't remember who uh, we we are aware of it and we're working on it. Okay. Uh, but it, it just relies on these ad hoc insights that random people have uh, that things will break, and I yeah that's that's not really right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then as a follow up, we can also then discuss how to try to yeah the right uh, tests. Or, or have some tests at the tender mean level then? So, so I actually think IBC should have its own acceptance test for events and then like ca then catch them in end to end tests. Like on SDK, we can't have IBC acceptance tests because we can't have IBC as a dependency. Yeah. I mean, we, we have end to end tests. Uh, so if, if there are changes in the events, yeah, the, the, the end to end tests fail, like what happened now with the yeah, it was essentially our end-to-end -end suite which yeah. caught this um, because we used the strange love IBC test framework and that's in turn using a dockerized Go Reeler. Mm. But like, I know that there's been some talk about potentially them adding support for Hermes in the IBC test repo as well and that would be even better because then you could run both. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Okay, we have a couple of follow-up uh, items, so so we will continue from there then. All right, uh, thanks. Um, then the other uh, feature that we're working on now for V7 is to add, add the OC support for ICS20. Uh, we're continuing the work that was initiated by Inclusion. Uh, Saki opened a PR. Um, uh, and yeah, we're we're basically continuing the work from there. All right, so so that's basically V seven. Uh, any questions? Any other questions? What's the spec for that auth support? Is that primarily adding actions so that they're sort of direct auth grants of send money with limits or something? Or but is there is there a spec? Uh, there's no spec, uh, but it's basically um yeah what what you said is is uh, allowing users to um uh, um grant privileges to another account to send to do ibc transfers um yeah it's, it's basically that yeah okay. and we're just implementing it uh, in a similar way as uh, it is implemented for the the, cost, the, the SDK's uh, bank module that this, the send uh, that you can also grant uh, privileges to another account to do a normal bank send. Uh, we're doing a similar implementation, but in, in this case for I, ICS20. That's yeah, okay, so it provides everything basically is interacted through all C. So you basically just implement an interface and then you just create a grant and then you would exec a uh, IBC token transfer via OTC. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
yeah, the question is whether it, you know, handle limits and, and aggregate limits and rates or any of that sort of stuff. Um, yes. So when you when you specify the, the the authorization, you can specify like what's the spend limit. Uh, you can specify like what what um, uh, recipient addresses you want to allow, uh, what uh, source port source uh, yeah source port and source channel IDs you want to the the other account to be uh, um, allowed to to send the tokens over. Um, th there is a PR. Uh, well, the PR that PR is already merged, um, but I can point you to the issue that we have and and the code a bit if you want to have a look. Would that be? Would yeah, the issue would be great. Yeah. Okay. I will. Um, let me just quickly find it because it's. This, this is the initial issue. Then uh, Saki opened a PR, <clears throat> which has slightly different implementation than what is discussed there, but but the idea is very similar. Yeah. I'll put it here. All right, um, then that's about that's about it for V7. And then the next thing that uh, we would be working on is with V7.1, uh, which uh, we're planning to include, where well, we're planning to include the the work that Strangelove uh, has been doing on, on the local host connection, and also add the support for Watson Light clients. Uh, which is what the feature that has been de been developed by Strangelove and Composable. Uh, so yeah, we will collaborate with them to uh, upstream uh, those features into IBC Go and release them in 7.1. That will be our make next yeah uh, next release. That's a powerful point release. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we think that there will be no API breaking changes. So yeah, um, we can make it as a 7.1. Amazing. Yeah, hopefully we'll, it will be okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then on the protocol side, uh, yeah, Aditya opened a PR uh, with some um, improvement or um, design patterns uh, for, for ICS 30, for, for middleware. Uh, so I, I have the link here for the PR if uh, anybody would like to have a look. Um, yeah, ba basically those are, uh, yeah, Aditya's not in the call and he would be able to give more details, but, but basically in that PR, uh, he explains uh, some design patterns to enable more complex um, middleware flows. Um, for example, uh, middlewares would be able to to wrap the application packet data with uh, their own packet data, and also the same for the acknowledgments. They would be able to wrap the application acknowledgement with um, with their own acknowledgement, um, and yeah, that would be that would yeah. This is basically like laying the the groundwork for for ADR eight for for what Susanna was explaining uh, before in a, in a more uh, generic long-term uh, uh, design solution that uh, where, where it is uh, currently available. Any questions about that? Yeah, the, the PR is there. If somebody would like to, to have a look and read it, please do. Um, and then also we're busy reviewing some some other specs. Uh, there's the ICS 100 atomic swap, um, the the one from um, from from Polymer uh, about the multi-hop channels, 
uh, also composable uh, opened a PR with uh, updates to uh, the Wasm clients um, to update the spec uh, uh, with the changes um, from the implementation. Yeah, so we are also busy in reviewing those. Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's also from the protocol side. Any any questions or? Yeah, I uh, no more of a question. Just more of a, an ask here. I recently opened the ICS 15 spec. So is it possible we add that to the pile for reviewing? Um, also, um, I'll be implementing the ICS 15 spec in Rust. So in an ideal world, once the ICS 8 Swazen client is completed, Cosmos Change can use my Rust implementation uh, to, commun to communicate directly with Ethereum. So. That's kind of the plan there. Uh, no, maybe this is a real question. Um, is there going? Is there sentiment to support this work by grants? Um, yeah, that question uh, I cannot really answer. Uh, um, I don't know if Susanna or somebody else would be able to answer it here, but uh, I think that's something that we should be taking with uh, probably ICF, right? Uh, yeah, we don't have any authority to grant grants or anything like that. So it's kind of beyond uh, the scope. Of basically, in short, like they're, they're, the grants program is closed, but there will be like future RFPs. Um, and But those are slated, um, those will be figured out during Q1 and possibly early Q2. But it's unclear what the RFPs will be. No. Um, and yeah, and we will try to to also um, review put put the the PR for ICS fifteen in the pipeline as, as soon as we we can also. Uh, I see a question in the chat uh, about ICQ. <clears throat> um, Matthew, you are asking about the strange love implementation. The PR. Uh, I guess I was asking about it all together because it looks like that there was work needed to be done on the relayers along with like the strange love implementation. Um, I think they had the host implementation. It also seems like, uh, I think it's Kazar. They had like the, um, the uh, client or controller implementation. I just want to know if like there was like an overall like timeline for um, like all of that to be in like um, I, uh, in uh, IBC. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the latest, maybe Susanna can also here um, provide more details. The latest uh, information that I had is that the Strangelove implementation would actually uh, not be upstream to IBC Go, so it would be, um, it would live in a repository of the Cosmos organization. But yeah, maybe Susanna, you have more information here, the latest. Uh, um, um, yeah, when we like looked into it, because there's another implementation, which is the client queries. Um, and when I did some product research, which I wrote up, um, there were like clear benefits to both. Um, so at this time, it wasn't like certain to upstream one over the other. Um, and also the thing that lots of people were asking for was like a subscription channel. Um, so I guess I, I think there's plan for them to work on that feature as well. Um, I don't know if it has been broken out into a module yet. I'm not sure any exact status on the packet queries, um, but basically once it is broken out into a module and there's really a support for it, then it should be usable. Um, but I don't know if someone from Strange Love can give a, like, update on the status like I thought it was almost ready or if not ready I'm just not sure if it's in a module yet yeah I, I think I'm the only one from strange love on here and unfortunately um I've, I've mainly joined to talk about the wasm light client if there's any questions about that um so many of the other uh projects going on within strange love I don't have limited visibility to mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I guess I could send them a question on like uh, Discord, like on the uh, 
straight strange love server mm -hmm. yeah all right um then we move to the update from the related teams and um, adi from hermes anything you would like to share Nothing major, just a couple of bugs, one of them on the interchange security, uh, or another one was uh, the one that we tagged you also, Carlos, with the receiver field being huge. Uh, seems like that was unblocked. Uh, we also worked on the rate limiter spec, and I actually wanted to ask that because I missed the discussion in the beginning. Uh, and in general, working also on uh, making the, uh, the relayer more modular so that it can be composed as a library into arbitrary kind of relayer binaries instead of just one pre-made Hermes binary. Uh, so these are all the different kinds of things we're working on. Uh, yeah, the, the, the question that I have is, um, uh, actually I'll write it and we can go into it after the Go Relayer team updates, if there is anything. All right, thank you, Adi. Um, Carlos, anything you want to add? Um, yeah, since uh, only Steve is here, Bruno Strangelove, maybe uh, we don't have any many updates from the Relayer team. Uh, but Steve, um, did you want to share maybe something about the Watson clients? Sure. Um, so we are shifting focus uh, to building out the substrate support in, into the Relayer. Um, so. That's where I, I believe the majority of the work is left. Um, the last month or two, we've uh, been mostly working on the IBC Go side, the IBC test. Um, IBC test has ha needed to be built out uh, to support the uh, Polkadot's relay chain and uh, uh, parachains. Um, and uh, then there's additional um, API packages that that have needed to add support for for IBC on the on the substrate side, um, and so that, that's about it. Uh, we the majority of the work at this point it, that's left is is on the relayer, and so we'll be uh, putting a lot more resources into that. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um... I, I also just posted a, a message on this strange love uh, Slack channel that we have. Um, yeah, that we would like to have like a, um, yeah, like a kickoff session to go through the um, the Watson changes in IBC Go to get yeah. So um, I'm still uh, looking to see who will who's all interested in in joining that. Um, okay. I know it's going to be myself, Brian. Um, and then, then possibly a few other people. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, we can we can continue in, in a Slack then to organize that. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, so then, any other updates or topics? Uh, Adi, do you have some questions here? Yeah, I I've missed the first few minutes of the call, so my bad. If this was handled, we can also. Uh, do it on Slack. I don't want to take everyone's time. Uh, just updates on the rate limiter. My basic question is, is it going, is the IBC Go team going to implement this or is uh, the, la the latest discussion that I was part of, we agree that is the responsibility of the Gaia team uh, to implement it. And I just want to coordinate with them if they're going to do it. Um, and the same goes for the receiver field vulnerability. Which team handles these things? Well, on the rate limiter, um... Osmosis implemented one using like the Go middleware as a wrapper, but all of the logic was in Cosmosm. And then Axelar basically implemented a entirely like Go middleware based on that spec. And so have Stride. Um, so I guess they've both done it before the hub team uh, was, I guess, gonna, going to do it. They didn't do it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I guess maybe it was just before you joined. Um, like as there's now like implementations that already exist, um, I guess like the hub adopting one of them is one thing. Um, but yeah, we were going to work with Stride to kind of have a tutorial on the rate limiting. Um, like as another example of implementing a rate limiting uh, middleware. Um, but like 
they've only I think it was merged or the PR is still open I know that Axelar are using theirs already but they have some kind of Axelar specific um, logic based on their interoperability like application which makes it not entirely generalizable whereas the stride rate limiting middleware from my understanding is way more kind of generalizable for any cosmos chain that wants to implement it okay so the short answer is there's no implementation that is going to be blessed by the core team either ibc go or sdk it's kind of each chain to its own each chain does whatever they think is best well i guess each person has to set their own rate limits in a way um but like to standardize around a specific middleware they're both implemented in line with how osmosis implemented theirs because they did it before um there was kind of any like security discuss like i think they implemented it in summer or something like that um so it was before that conversation of the hub actually implementing something started as well so I guess that's kind of become a de facto standard. Thanks. Uh, I'll try to rephrase the question then. Um, is the IBC Go, is the extent of the IBC Go team's uh, contribution to a rate limiter will be writing a tutorial or is there going to be technical contributions that the IBC Go team will do? I mean, they both already exist as implementations. Um, so I guess like we're not going to remake one, right? It's like, yeah, <laughs> that would seem, um, yeah. Cool, thanks. And then on the receiver field uh, PR that Jacob opened and there was another PR that was opened like in September or August last year. Yeah, yeah, I, I, um, I guess my question is like, I, I, maybe I should, repeat back what I think others were telling me. I was just a little confused. I think Zucky was saying it that we should choose some default field length limit in the SDK. And then Marco, I actually, I hadn't had a chance to talk to you about this. I wanted to know if you felt that's appropriate too. Like a, a field length limiter? In the SDK? Yeah, I, I, I think that that was the solution. And Charlie, if I'm wrong, because Charlie was mentioning this too and, and mentioned it some months ago too. Charlie, if I'm getting this a little wrong, please uh, jump in and correct me, okay? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think like for me, it's it's still unclear at the moment if it's the SDK or a tendermint um, that should be handling this. But I think my main concern was handling it in IBC Go. Um, as opposed to the other two, just because it would be then kind of a patchwork solution as opposed to fixing it at the level, at the base level. Yeah, I, I think there's like um, multiple issues that we saw with this. There's, I think, um, one at each layer of the stack. So it's kind of like, why is Tendermint allowing a transaction that is larger than one megabyte in the mempool? Um, and then in the SDK, Kind of like why is the um why is the SDK um, I think we also have like some sort of max bytes or something. Um why is the SDK allowing a greater than max bytes to even pass the GRPC level? Because I think GRPC is limited to like four megabytes. Um as, and then it's like uh and then for something like um limiting fields, I, I would say this is like a module specific thing, like um kind of like in governance for like the the metadata and the summary and the title we limit it to like 255 characters but like if someone wants if an app chain wants to put in like limited to 10,000 characters um but then like the 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 tx um receiver the tx field limiter is set to like 200 then it's like they conflict um so i would say it's like there's like different issues at different layers of the stack, but at least the, the limiter on the field should be like module specific. 
So that, Marcos, that is actually what I thought. And that, that would mean that we actually put the limits on an IBC go, right? Yeah. I, I'm okay. Confused. Yeah. This kind of limit should be at each level, right? You know, Tenderman should stand alone and protect itself from, from, from problems here. And so it should be having field size limits for anything that is, you know, a variable size. Um, so, so, I mean, in Tendermint, Tendermint doesn't know what's in the transaction, so it can only disallow like the max transaction size, which is by default one megabyte. So the question is like, why is why did a 10 megabyte transaction get through? Um, and then the next one is like on the gRPC level, because I think some relayer did this over gRPC, like gRPC is limited to four megabytes. So why is like a 10 megabyte um, response being given? Um, so it's like, yeah, you're right. Each level does have its like own designed um, limiter, but it seems like they were bypassed somehow, which is kind of unclear to me. Okay, then it seems- Yeah, like, it's a pretty weird one. It seems like specifically to this call, uh, whether IBC Go team has any opinions on the field specific limiter. So not transaction, not gRPC, but field specific limiter. Yeah, I think that um, adding all kind of checks for uh, limits in IBC Go would um, would be a bit cumbersome because then we will have to add it to a lot of maybe fields. If the if Tendermint can already block transactions that are larger than one megabyte, that should already protect us, uh, I guess. So. Um. So uh, Carlos, just, just speaking like from a relayer's perspective, um, this thing was really hard to clear uh, and it caused, so Hermes failed, um, the TypeScript relayer failed uh, and uh, the Go relayer failed, all of them, I, I tried each. And um, the eventual solution was quite interesting. Uh, this, this fellow Cold Chain, he goes by Get Coldy as a validator. He's also the person, so everybody knows who made the transaction. Um, was able to clean it up, and he like uh, scanned the network for an archive node, and then connected to its its raw RPC. But point is, this uh, like even if we set it, even even if we were putting limits somehow in IBC at 100 kilobytes, right? Because the client update transactions are very large. Um, I believe that it would cost, uh, or I believe that it would save us uh, a, a future briefing attack, which would work like, so somebody would make lots of these, they would attempt to shut down IBC on a specific chain, make lots of noise while they have short positions in play. Uh, so what I mean is I, I believe that there, there is an incentivization uh, to do this. And like, sure, the transfer channel, uh, it's unordered, but I think every relayer has seen channels basically become unclearable. Um, the way we solve that at Notional is to run both Hermes and the Go relayer at the same time. For whatever reason, this helps with clearing the channel, but it, it can take hours. Um, and um, Sorry, Jacob, I don't want to interrupt. Yeah. I wanted to clarify because I, I remember or I read the conversation with Colchain and I thought the issue there was uh, having access to the archive node, which had the transaction in the first place because it was so old. Or maybe I misunderstood the solution for it. Okay. Uh, a few weeks ago when he tried to clear it, he didn't have access to that. But no, there were um, a bunch of other issues. This transaction was so weird, it broke Notional's um, was it? Uh, Nginx configuration, uh, which we eventually modified. And then another thing broke. I don't know what the second thing is. And that was on a, you know, 100% archive node. Um, you know, just the point being is I, I really don't know if we can clear these things on, on any kind of a reliable basis. Um, even, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, um, I, I think um, my preference would be first to figure out why Tendermint didn't, uh, yeah, um, exclude the transaction, uh, and then and then maybe continue from there uh, because that's that's also still something that is not clear. Uh I think it's possible to bypass Tendermint by having a proposer that bypasses that check of one megabyte. Uh, and maybe similarly, you can bypass gRPC. Uh, so there has to be some sort of application level check. Uh, but I agree with you, Carlos, that there should be at least some basic check. And I think that exists in Tendermint. I don't know why it was bypassed, but I think it can be bypassed if you just have control over, over a proposer that skips that check for whatever reason. Um, yes. So you're, saying, so you're saying that if there's like a malicious node, then they could actually bypass the check anyway? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that this involved it, that. It's a node operator config. So it's in the config.toml. Um, but like the, so the, the proposer was Cosmos Station. So this, the simplest like check would be like, hey, Cosmos Station, do you guys have like your max TX bytes set to greater than one megabyte? If they say no, then, um, then it's technically like something on the Tendermint side. Um, secondly, um, like why um, then I think on the SDK side, we should just check like check TX because I think on check TX, we should also be checking it um, somewhere. Um, but yeah, I think like the simplest way to answer that is just like ask, um, ask Cosmos Station if they have their max TX bytes set to greater than one megabyte. Okay, Jacob, can I you can do ask it? them. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no trouble. Um, and, and I guess my 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 feeling, I think it was Dean speaking, but I'm not sure, who said that that each layer should defend itself. That is my feeling on this. I think that in the present state, uh, it's possible to create many of these. And, I, and again, I just I don't know if if any of the relayers uh, could handle it. And so you guys know, Cold Chain is, he's also a pretty experienced relayer. Um, so yeah, that's my thought on it. Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess if it can be bypassed on the other levels by a malicious operator, then we should handle those cases for sure on that partition level. Cool. I guess that problem exists for every single message type though, even in the SDK. It's like you would have to do length checks or size checks on every field of every message type. I mean, the, yeah, this is why it's like weird because it's like, I'm pretty sure if, if like I have a node that like, um, I mean, the, the, the simplest way to check this is like um, spin up a Tendermint node, take the load, the load tester from informal and just say like send 10 megabyte transactions and see if they get added to the block. And if so, then the max TX bytes from the config.tom is not being respected in Tendermint. Um, but yeah, there's, um, yeah, it, technically it's like, you can try and submit a transaction on the hub, Just try and like do a bank send and submit that address as the, as the receiver, like the 10 megabyte transaction and see if it goes through. Um, maybe it will, I don't know. I can do that. Oh, they, they go through. Um, like you could take that, that exact same receiver field and it'll it'll go through. And if you do want to test it, you know, I, I generally am a fan of testing in prod. So Adi, if you want to do it and then post the link or um, I could, uh, but yeah, I believe it's going to be found to be valid. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll do it first in a test net using TM low test because it's easier to set up and, and then we might follow up. Oh, after. nice. And then we don't have to play with the main net. That's, that's beautiful. Yep. Excellent take down that chain. <laughs> nice. Thanks, Adi. That would be great. Cool. Uh, yeah, thank you, Adi. So, so then we have that uh, action, action from Adi to test that. Uh, Jacob, you can ask Cosmos Station about the, the size check. Uh, anything else for now that we should do? Um, or first, we see what's the result of those two yeah. items, and then we see. I have a question. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a directive. I don't yet understand why we shouldn't put limits on everything in IBC. Is it just that it's a bunch of work or is, is there any other reason 
that's that's just my question. Um, the answer would be yes. It's, it's a bunch of work, so then we would need to add uh, checks on every field. Um, and before doing that, uh, as, at least my preference would be to to check what's happening in the layers below. Yeah, I think the other thing is like if we were only doing the checks in IVC and kind of depending on those to catch the security, like assuming obviously assuming that the checks on the lower layers would work, then we're kind of implementing a solution which is more prone to error because we have to do it very patchwork as, a, as opposed to implementing a solution which is not as prone to error. But obviously if the situation is the case that the layer below is not going to is going to be bypassed anyway then we have to go with this maybe more suboptimal solution which is more error prone if that makes sense yeah yeah it does and i'm not sure it's more error prone i, I just view it as like more defensive um but uh that's my question and thank you so much for like you know walking me through uh your view of it i think it definitely makes sense to understand the SDK's actions and, and Tendermint's actions, maybe before coming up with a strategy. Okay, cool. Then we agree on that. Um, sorry. Um, all right. Anything? Anything else about this issue or about any other topic? Not from my side. All right. Cool. Then. If there's nothing else, then um, thanks everyone for joining. Cool. Thank you. See ya. Thanks, Carlos. Thank you. Bye-bye.